What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 joint tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to learn how to create a joint to simulate the movement between two gears that are at 90 degrees to each other. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so last week we talked about how to use two flat gears in order to simulate the movement between those two gears. In this week's video, we're going to create two gears that are at a 90 degree angle to each other. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and insert these from the McMaster car library. So we're just going to go in here and we're just going to type in gear. I, I know sometimes you want to model your own gears. In this case, I want to talk more about how to actually create the, the joint simulation between the two. So we're just going to download these instead. And so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're just going to pick a couple gears. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select, we're going to select this gear with 12 teeth. And we'll go ahead and we'll download this by going to 3D Step and clicking on Save. Then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to also download the other gear that had 24 teeth. So we're just going to go back in here, type in gear. We'll do the 16 pitch with 24 teeth. And we'll go ahead and we'll download this one as well. And so you can see how we have two different gears in here right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this big one where it is. I'm going to take the first gear and I'm going to use the move tool in order to align this. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to look at this from a front view and move it up. And then from a side view to make sure everything's aligned. So I'm going to move it across this way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set this up where these teeth are kind of aligned. We're just going to get these close. Um, I haven't gone through and done the mathematical calculations to make this an exact gear. Um, instead, again, I want to focus more on the actual movement of the two gears in here. You know, if that's something you're all interested in, maybe we can talk about that a little bit more in a future video. But for now, I'm just going to set these up and I'm just going to align them. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate this. And what I'm going to do, because we have 12 gears here plus 12 gaps, is I'm going to rotate this negative 360 degrees divided by 12 times 2. And I'm going to hit the enter key. And so what that's going to do is that's going to rotate this so that our gear fits inside of our gap. And then we're just going to fine adjust this a little bit more. There we go. So this would probably work if you were to 3D print this, but again, it's not going to be exactly mathematically correct. But again, for this video, I wanted to focus more on the joint and motion simulation so that you could create simulations with things like this. And so now what we need to do is, if you remember working with different gears, um, the way that we need to do this is we need to set these up as different joints. So what we need to do in this situation is when we create our joint, we need to create an as-built joint rather than a joint that uh, rather than a joint that's going to define the relationship between one object as another because these are already in place and they're just going to spin in place. We need to create an as-built joint. But what that means is that means that this object needs to have a relationship with something, and it's not going to have the joint relationship with this object because then the two uh, markers would have to be aligned. And so what I want to do instead is we're going to do something a little different than what we've done before. We're going to basically create a new component that's empty. So we're just going to go inside of our unsaved, right click, and we're going to click on component. And then inside of that component, what we're going to do is we're going to model a line that runs right down the middle, and we're going to create the joint between that and our gear. So one other thing that might be helpful is you probably want to come in here under construct and you want to create, we'll go ahead and click on capture position. You want to go ahead and you want to create an axis through a cylinder. That's going to allow us to create a line through the very center of this or a guide through the very center of this. And then we can come in here. And so we've created this uh, guide through here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a plane at an angle to this line. We'll just leave it at zero degrees. All we need is a plane that we can come in here and we can create this sketch on. So I'm going to come in here and click on create sketch. And we're just going to draw a line that runs through the middle of this object. And notice that we are inside of this component. That's why everything is showing up as gray in here, because it's showing us that the only thing we're editing right now is this line in this component. Well, the thing is, now that this, this sketch line has been created inside of this component, we can create a relationship between this line 
and our gear. So in order to do that, we're going to go back and we're going to make our overall model the active component again. And then we're going to create an as-built joint. What the as-built joint is going to do is that's going to allow us to select two components. So in this case, our gear. And then that sketch that we drew in here. And we're going to be able to set that to a revolute joint. And so it's going to ask us for a position. That's basically it asking us what we want it to rotate around. Well, in this case, I'm going to rotate, or I'm going to put my mouse over this line. I'm going to hold the control key, and then I'm going to click on this center point. You can see how now what this has done is this has created a joint between this edge component that we created and our gear. But right now, if we were to click and drag on this, you can see how this is going to move around. So what we need to do is we need to right click on this line component. We need to click on ground. Now, if I click and drag my gear, you can see how that's going to turn based on where I drag my mouse. And I'm gonna undo that for now because my position was already correct. But so what we've done is we've now created this gear where it stays and spins in place. Well, now we need to do the same thing for our other gear. So we're just gonna right click and create a new component. So in this case, we don't need to draw that central axis because this is centered on our green axis, which the other one might have been as well, but I wasn't sure. So we just want to turn our origin on. We want to create a sketch along our origin. We just want to draw a line along this central point. And again, notice that we're drawing this inside of this component four. Then we want to go back to our overall component. We want to create our as-built joint between this gear and this edge, and then we want to set our rotation at the center of this object. So you can see how now this spins as well. And so now, all we need to do is we just need to define a movement relationship between our two different gears. Because you can see how we can click and drag, and we need to ground this line. So we're going to right click on it and click ground. And then, now you can see how that one spins as well. But what we want is we want this to spin both of these. So the way that we can do that is we can go to a symbol and we want to create a motion link between our big gear and our small gear. So it's going to ask us for the link between or which joints we want to link. Well, in this case, we want to link this joint with this joint. So we're going to click on both of those and you can see how now those are both turning at the same time. And so one thing you're going to note about this is that your big gear and your small gear are currently spinning at the same rate. Well, we need to change this so that our small gear is spinning twice as fast as our big gear. So in order to do that, we just want to take the angle of our second gear. We want to set that to 180 degrees. So what that means is that means that our small gear is going to turn 360 degrees in the time it takes our big gear to turn 180 degrees. Well, you can see how now in this animation, these gears are actually meshing together and they're working at the same rate. So if we click on OK, now if we were to come in here and click and drag one of these gears, notice that the other gear is turning at the same rate in here. So now this gear is actually acting as if it would in real life. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hide these two components because we don't need them showing up in here. You can hide your origin as well. You can see how this joint is now an accurate simulation of the way this joint would work in the real world or in real life. So one other thing we could do if we wanted to, and this is kind of up to you, is if you wanted then to create like a drive shaft or something like that coming off of this, you could just come in here and you could just create a sketch. And we'll go ahead and set it along this face and we're going to say to go ahead and continue. We're just going to draw a circle based on this central point here and we're going to click on finish sketch. And then we're going to extrude this down into our object. We're going to set this as a two-sided extrusion, so we're also going to extrude it up in order to create our shaft. And, and we don't want to set this as a join operation. Instead, we want to create this as a new component. So if you wanted to make this shaft a part of your actual gear, you could create this as a join operation, or you could also just create it as a new component, and then you could create a rigid joint between the two. So let's say we were to create this as a new component, and let's go ahead and just add something non-symmetrical on here. And 
we'll go ahead and extrude this up just so you can see this spin. And then all we want to do is we just want to create a rigid joint between this object, this component, and this component right here. And so all we're going to do is we're going to create a joint between these two objects. And so we're going to select our first component. And then we're going to select our second component in order to create our joint. We're going to set this as a rigid joint. And so we're just going to create a joint right here. We'll set this as a rigid joint and we'll click on OK. So what that means is now whenever this object turns, this object will turn as well. So now you can see how when I spin this gear down below, this shaft coming off the top spins along with it because we created a rigid joint between this object and this gear. So you can also spin this top piece up here and you can see how the objects below will spin because of that rigid joint. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you created a gear like this? Or have you created joints like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.